What nature has done for millions of years, I suppose, is assemble molecules, uh, those kinds of molecules which are basic, basic components of fat called lip lipids. These kinds of molecules, hydrocarbon type molecules, assemble naturally in uh, biological substances, in plants. And so it's well known that they can form, even form thin films, often freestanding films. When we entered the area of pursuing these self-assembly processes, what we did that was different was to cause the molecules to self-assemble on a flat surface of interest. Something nature wouldn't do simply because that flat surface was of no interest in biological processes. Jacob turned to silicon and Ralph and I, when we started originally, turned to gold. Not purposefully, but discovering by accident that in fact you could self-assemble molecules that on gold surfaces. So the self-assembly itself is nature's trip for millions of years. Our part was to discover it in a new uh, situation that we created. We created the pieces and nature did the rest. What we've done now is we've like said that, you know, the, the properties that we need are things that can be, uh, in, you know, instill, you know, basically constructed in, in, in objects by design. We can manipulate things purposefully as to composition, form, dynamics, etc., and and use that beneficially towards, you know, towards uh, uh, particular desired applications. And and that's the part of it that I think that's become particularly enabling. Um, from a technology perspective. It is possible to uh, affect a design at, at a very high level and classes of materials which, you know, would have been like Im impossible to envision, you know, working with, you know, in that context. So there's been a lot of evolution. I don't mean to trivialize all the contributions I think go into it, but, you know, we started with like understanding surfaces and interfaces. And then we, you know, based on lots of different contributions, went to how to do, you know, fabrication and patterning. And, you know, and then people were thinking top down, bottom up approaches to doing fabrication. And, and as you do all that, you know, the, the footprint gets bigger and bigger, like all the time, you know, and, and what would have been like an, an audacious, impossible aspiration, you know, like at the outset actually becomes not that, you know, unimaginable as the sophistication of what you're doing just expand, you know, in, in result of the work. Sam's was like a start in that process, but it's really uh, gone far and beyond, I, I think, uh, where you know, we started in, in 1980, at least like, you know, where, where I started in 1980. Surfaces are so important and so ubiquitous throughout technology and human use that wherever you can find a surface, you can ask a question, which can be scientific or it can be technological. And self-assembled model layers are helpful to you in understanding that. And I think it's probably that that is ultimately the the key to use of these things because what they do is to make it possible to vary the properties of surfaces at command relatively simply. You simply dip the surface that you're interested in in a solution containing the molecules that absorb on the surface and self-assembly will generate the structure you're interested in. The limits to self-assembled model layers are that most of the molecules that are used right now are pretty simple molecules. Now you can make more complicated ones, but when you make more complicated ones, then the technology becomes more complicated. And one of the virtues is that we, in particular, really believe as a principle of doing research that to make good science into good technology, it's easiest if everything is very simple. So there's a lot to be said for just thinking about simplicity as a guiding principle in research. And if you're trying to make something that's modified surface properties at 2,000 degrees, or you're trying to make um, surfaces that are uh, amenable to um, 
extreme x-ray exposures or whatever, that's hard to do and that's going to require more work. I claim that our research, what we are doing, is leading itself. What I mean, you start with something, eventually you discover something that you didn't think about. I mean, you, you, you had some idea, but not necessarily what came out of it. And this leads you to the next step. And then again, it can go in different directions. So actually the research leads itself if you have an open mind. The best thing that can happen is that something doesn't work according to your original idea. Good things come out of this, what is called serendipity. But you have to have a prepared mind, and of course, if you don't work on something, you cannot discover. You have to, to work on something that may lead you to the discovery. But you cannot plan the discovery. But once it's there, you have to recognize it. And then you have to work hard to prove that what you think is there, it's indeed there. And it's not a fake. All this is a game, actually. We you have to let people playing, you know. There are different kinds of science. You can work for a certain purpose, to make a certain device, you know, applied science. And this is, is okay, it's fine. And you, you get also satisfaction if you manage to do something useful. But to discover something new or to come across something you didn't expect is very exciting. And so we are actually, I think that all my life I was playing science. And uh, this was uh, more or less a hobby. The work was only how to get the means to do the hobby. I think forward-looking, I, I think the applications in, in biomedical contexts are really quite interesting. And they're, they're the ones that I'm most interested in at this point in time. When you start working with living things, you know, the first thing you have to uh, come to understand is they, they do have you know, a mind of their own. And almost everything that you can do you know, to perturb a system, you know, perturbs the system. It's very complex. Please welcome on stage Jakob Sargiv, Ralph Nutzo, representing David Alara, Paul Weiss and George Whitesides.